You only have one monitor, right? Yeah, I only have one monitor. I still live in the yeah. mono monitor world. <sighs> okay. So, uh, refresh, because I did hit... Start. Hey, we're live! Okay, we are. Good. So... Hey! We welcome. made it. We're live. How are we doing, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Uh, we are up and, run, up and moving. Uh, it's been a long couple of days for me, so if I'm a little out of it, I apologize. Uh, we got a lot to talk about tonight. We asked you guys to submit decks, and Lord Almighty, did you guys ever. <laughs> Um, we have a, are going to be only looking at six decks that, uh, were submitted to us. Yep. Um, and then we will talk a little bit more about Final Fantasy, uh, because, you know, this may be a thing. Yeah, it definitely might be a thing. Uh, uh, but, you know, we're doing this right now. Yep. This is what we're known for. And we had to cover up Joe's face just to make room for the decks we're going to be looking at. So we are, excuse me, going to start off with uh, William Caldwell. I believe he's from the Hunts. Hunts I think Google? he's, yeah, Indiana group. That's the best way I can usually find it. Indiana, uh, Putsville. Yeah, he's out of that group. Okay, now, guys, uh, before we go really in-depth into this, I'm going to start off by saying, uh, because we are not on um, Hangout anymore, uh, we don't have the luxury of just doing share screen, so these are screenshot. I edited it and uh, cut it down and trimmed it to where it will fit on the screen for us, so mm -hmm. uh, we do not have the luxury of scrolling through the cards anymore to see effects. I apologize. That's something I'll have to figure out as we go through in this uh, new process of starting okay. over on Twitch. Um, but uh, Ringman, it looks like this is capitalizing on big cards that can become small by a secondary effect. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of foundations. I'm wondering well, if this is it's not a lot of foundations. There's only 42 foundations. It's that there's a lot of variety of foundations. All right. That's what we're seeing here. Um, with Bringman, the biggest, the big thing is, is two giant attack. There's three giant attacks in the deck. We got Dragonfire, which is that ginormous kill condition level card from uh, World of Endings. Uh, we have Flying Fortress Buster, which is even a great lead. Like it's only six difficulty. It's also really good play after you know playing fight after playing your first attack. Uh, we have Gamma Crush, which is pretty good if you're playing if you're playing enough to foundation destruction effects, which you can easily do. Um, and then we have for additional attacks, Holographic Buster, which is destroy one foundation. You're to point your opponent destroys one and give this attack plus two damage. Uh, this deck is pretty solid off of Ringman. If you're playing this off of Ring with when your second attack with Ringman. It's plus one speed, plus three damage. It is a pretty aggressive attack. Like, it's a six mid for seven, eight, nine, if you do the ability with powerful. Like, yeah. this is one of those cards I like. This is one of those attacks I'm like, I really wanted to see play at some point because I really think it's good. So, do you think the revokes are needed? Because right now, this is a total of 62 cards. Yes. I think if you're playing, if you're playing mono symbol on evil life or void you should be playing two revokes minimum right. but i mean i, I, I want to say he needs to up the count a little because with the massive variety he has in just the foundations alone with 42 then 18 attacks slapped into it uh what are honest to god the chances of him even seeing the revokes at a needed time you gotta understand, you're you're, you're playing Ring Man. Uh, you're, you're that's the one thing. Everything is like, oh, you're only playing two of a card. And you're playing sixty-two cards. I'm like, but every, you gotta remember that there's a math to this game of you're gonna so many cards go through. This is true. You like like you're playing Ring Man. It's like, oh, I'm going to like you have egotistical. You have clever strategists. You have a ton of cards just to try to value off of. And you have Ringman like, himself on their second attack. 
Yep, you have Rainbow itself. You have Thrill for Battle. Like you just have a ways to value cards, where getting your evokes or getting that certain card is gonna be no issue. Mm. Like I, I, everybody, everybody's always like, oh, he's like you can don't you can't play one ofs or something like that. I'm like I play one ofs a lot of my decks, and let me tell you, I find them a lot of times. It's not a big issue. Yeah, well, yeah. That holds a lot more validity than what I was thinking of. But yeah, no, I definitely see your point. Um, Are there any other standout cards or cards you think that uh, should be added into the deck? Um, Off of Evil right now, I think you could probably clean this deck up a little bit. A um, couple of things I'd recommend uh, is probably playing a set of Aphidiophobia. Uh, I really don't like playing more than one beyond the gate. It's a four five. It does good things, but you you only need one. You the, the like you don't want to ever get two of those stuck in your hand. Um, like just number changes is more than anything. Like throw for battles is always good. Like if you you if you get merciless master and throw for battle out, and you're like, all right, I'm gonna merciless master. Put my my momentum on top of my deck. Throw for battle. Draw my co- reveal my attack. Draw it. Like you have those little combos you can do. To get some additional cards in hand. But yeah, the deck's pretty good. Like, it just, it probably needs some cleanup. I mean, Evil is in that weird spot right now with symbol with symbols. It's like, it's it's good. But it's either you're playing Yori, or you're playing like a very, I don't know, I, I almost want to say, you're playing the Yori or the Tali are like the two best Evil characters, and Tali 2 Dot. Like, I really don't think Ring Mantis, though, fits the bill at the moment. He just uh, he seems like a little like playing big attacks is not sometimes their best plan when there's already a character like probably when the tally rotates I could see Ringman getting there getting in there more possibly hopefully well, Blood Omen will bring some more cards back for him. Well, most definitely, I mean the tally two dot trumps Ringman completely because she just gets to play for free. As yeah. Opposed to long- I mean I understand that Ringman's got that ridiculously good uh, speed damage buff and speed buff. Uh, Speed pump, but you know, free is a free dragon flare is still better than a plus three plus plus one plus three minus three dragon flare. Yeah, I mean, putting a tra- setting a dragon flare for you know a nine mid for eleven is no laughing matter. <laughs> all right. I mean, that's probably all the deck has going for it. Is you have a nine mid for eleven. You have a six difficulty nine mid for eleven because you're gonna be playing that. We have minus one. Um, so William, this is fantastic. Uh, probably could cut down a little bit, and you know, I think just, your deck's gonna have its time to shine. Uh, just give it till what is it now? October, November. November. Uh, Blood Omens. Can, it, they're saying out mid no early November right now. Uh, for first Blood few Omen. weeks around November and. Ringman will most certainly rotate into that spot that uh, Natalie left, unless, you know, we don't know what the character cards are like in uh, whatchamacallit. That's so, true. That is true. But your day will come, sir. Your day will come. All right. Mm. Uh, next up, we have Dan. Dan from good old UK. So Dan talks, well, tries to talk to us a lot, unfortunately for Dan. He catches us just as we're working. So, yep. uh, Dan, we apologize that we're not able to talk to you as much as we'd like to. We're just at work. Uh, oh. Dan brought us Turbo Man. Uh, this is a Turbo Slam deck. Jesse, I know you are already greatly entrenched in all things Turbo Man, so take it away. Um. Okay, so... Big thing about Turbo Man, he definitely decided to go with the Slam theme. Uh, Turbo Slam, Templar's Justice, the Beast, all of the the JTL Bane ones, which are personally to me, they're pretty amazing. Uh, you know, like Beast Cannon, Diving Beast, Rising Beast, and then you know Scorch Wheel, cause it's Scorch Wheel. Um, there's no like it doesn't matter if you like the big objectives of this deck. Um, obviously, are Petro Power. Uh, they are get to get to three foundations on turn one, turn two, get Petro powers going, and just try to scorch wheel for as much value as possible. You're playing transform X transforms because well, you're playing so many slams. 
Uh, you want to, you're also playing another card, which I think is great, uh, Kiora, uh, which can make you go deeper into your turn, especially if you've drawn a lot of cards. Because uh, you can go play your slam, especially ones that don't have combo. You're just like, play your slam, play Kiora. This slam and this card don't count as progressive. Keep going. Just try to put as much damage as possible on the board. Uh, you're, you're really trying to get like three to five cards in play uh, with Turbo Man, uh, with tur uh, like just for Scorch Wheels to be value. Uh, yeah. There's a little, like, it's kind of cool. He's playing the, the Diving Beast Cannons, the Risings, like, they're, and then uh, just all the Beast Cannon wave. It's interesting. It's a little obscure. Maybe you could cut, I think, like, he's missing Top Spin, which. Uh, which is the one that you would cut? I'm thinking it's Diving Beast Cannon. Let me look it up real quick. Um, yeah, he goes, I would probably cut the high one. It's the plus one speed combo plus two damage. I rather play the plus one damage combo plus two speed, but on a low, and probably put top spins in there. Yeah. So yeah, cut uh, diving and put in uh, top spin. Yeah. Uh, like those are the big things. Now look at some other stuff he's playing that are really good right now. Uh, Adam, Adam Mission, the the Algor foundation that like it's always a half block doesn't matter it, it's always a half block doesn't matter what's if you block on zone or not um he is playing the off symbol the com almost completely off symbol lonelies which are really it's a high risk high reward plan like that's the i'm going second oh i have a lonely f lonely into play activate lonely put two foundations into play i've put three into play now play my pet play my petrol power from ham bring it down Play a scorch wheel, draw four cards, get go go to the go to the races plan. All right. Oh, like it, it, it's I, I will say this. This deck's really good. Uh, he's playing obviously golden tickets, playing saw blades, playing Drew Buffet Lion Buddy, all agreeable. I don't really understand battle fist in the deck. Let me look it's, and see what it is. Maybe it's something for sacking Battle Fist. Because I was kind of no, wondering about that too. No, it's just kind of a ready to foundations plan, which is not always great. I don't know. Eh. But I like the idea. He has a lot of the key components to like I would call the, the tier one or even at the S tier Turbo Man deck, but he's not playing them. He's just made its availability, made its you know, it's just how he wants to play the deck. Um, I would say this: if he's gonna play, the, if you, if he has this deck built and he's gonna play it at the uh, PTC this weekend in the UK, he still will be, he'll, he'll take games constantly because oh, yeah. he's mean, Turbo Man. I'm, I'm still hung up on the Battle Fist thing. Uh, my yeah. only reason to look at that is maybe it's there to a good check and a plus one. A good check, a plus one, and maybe if he is tapped out and. He thinks he can do it. He can extend uh, oh. his attack string by plus two foundations. Yeah, or he can pop the battle fist to ready foundations that came into play during the combat phase to re-ready them to use them again for the abilities. Or that's that. That the, I mean, that's okay. The other only other use I'd see is on his last stack when he knows it's his last stack. He can pop it ready to. And then have those and the summer heats ready for at least uh, three to potentially six on the opponent's turn. Yeah, I mean it's 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 an option, uh, but yeah, he's very heavy into the transform plan. Transform is cuckoo crazy. Uh, that card's gonna be a thing. Uh, if anybody has not not played, if, if anybody in your playgroup is yet to build the transform metal man deck. The day will come when you're gonna play against it. And you're not going to enjoy it very much. It's it's painful. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Because you're going like just looping, 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 looping. Like you just you could just do turns where you're just like, okay, I'm gonna play this attack, pick up my pick up my transform, play another attack, drag my transform down, do it again, do it again. Like you could just literally play attacks out of your yard. You know, you're um, playing. I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
I mean, it's really good. That's the, that's the idea. You know, I'm going to say this. And this is going to sound really weird, but since he is so foundation heavy, maybe uh-huh. putting Karamidama in, like, the sideboard? I can see Karamidama in here. Uh, it, it, it's not bad. It's not great. I mean, I, like, I, ladies, man. Like, he's only playing 33 foundations. Yeah. Like... I could see rather. I actually agree with the chat here. Uh, a ladies man would be really good in this deck. Yeah. Um, another thing I would think of, because it's been kind of testing the waters. I would say a champion of Southtown. Uh, oh, most definitely. Like it. Well, what they do? We just say a champion of Southtown is you could play like two ladies man, two champion of Southtowns, and you just have that possibility of like going okay. App commit put ladies man in my carpool it doesn't have progressive go off and then you have a way to ready things again and especially once that you've put down already and activated abilities so you can really go real big there i got you all right i mean it's a good day i mean trouble man's gonna be a good character trouble man's yeah, gonna have a lot of different builds um there's builds that are going to be focused on the transform loop there's going to be decks that are going to be built just specifically playing Scorch Wheel. There's going to be the decks that are going to play, like, a little bit of everything. Like, uh, I, I personally want to play them. If I was going to play them, I actually want to play them, like, Cycle Medley style and play, like, a lot of twos and just be, like, Cycle Medleys and just get a, just get as much value for Scorch Wheels as possible. All right. But, no, most definitely, uh, damn, definitely look into that stuff we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, just try Karami Dama just for the heck of it, because I mean, like you said, you're running six assets, so you know that's. But he's remember he's only running four though. Technically, he can never have six in play. <sighs> that's true. He's never mind then. Got, yeah, you gotta remember that with assets. Everyone's like, oh well, you're running so many assets, you could run Karami Dama. I'm like, but he's only running six at like three individuals, but he's running like six or eight of them. Gotcha. Yeah. That's my. Yeah, mistake. remember that. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up. Uh, Jarek. Which one is his? Uh, he is the... Uh, he is which the one Huntsville, are we doing? Huntsville, the which Donovan. one? Um, I need you to send me that one. I do apologize. I don't see... I didn't uh, yeah. see it. In the... One moment. I am being sent something because we for... forgot to grab it. <laughs> Yeah, that's my fault, guys. I've been busy editing and everything, and I just forgot to send in the links. Jerk, jerk, jerk. The wonders of being live, guys. But, you know, you yep. know, talk amongst yourselves. I mean, everybody's here. We got seven <laughs> people, which is one of the largest live audiences we've had in a good long while. Yeah. But we're on Twitch now. I think people are adapting more to Twitch because it's just easy to load. It's loadable on multiple formats. Uh, that's way to describe it. And Twitch is not as draconian as YouTube is right now, according to some people. But to be Very fair, true. To be fair, I have been looking into this, and I did listen to Co-Optional Podcast, which you guys should really listen to. It's an awesome thing. It's the Total Biscuit Guy. These yep. rules and whatnot have been in effect since last June. They've just been now uh, doing Enforcing stuff like them. this because of how political uh, the landscape is getting as the elections are getting closer. So nothing's really changed. We've just been posting more and more goofy political crap. Yep. Anyways, <laughs> hot Donovan. Ooh. Okay, so uh, Donovan. <laughs> okay, I, so... You can run that. You can talk about this one. I'll, I'll okay, chime so in. I sat there and we talked about this when he first sent it to me. Uh, I looked at this. This is this is a lot of stuff we got to talk about. So first off, I told him he needs to run Hanyan. Uh, he needs to run uh, some uh, lower difficulty attacks. I understand that Flame Sword uh, is a four. Stinging Upper is a four. And Igiri is a four, but everything else that's more I, heavy leaning here. I, I, I think okay, here's what I'm gonna give you I'm gonna stop you right there on that one, Joe. Because okay. here's what here's what Donovan brings to the table. He brings down that lockdown. That 
is really important to him. And the thing is why I would not run Hanya and Donovan is it's a silver bullet to him using his own um, first F. I did because not his first, remember that. Because San- Donovan's first F is choose two of your opponent's foundations or assets. Your opponent chooses one of your foundations or assets. Abilities on those cards cannot be played until the start of your next turn. Uh, what was so, the other thing he was asking? He actually he asked me what my thoughts about putting clear cutter in the deck was. Clear cutter. Yeah, I know. I totally blanked on that one too. Is that the new one? One of the new cards? Is that like a Tomahawk Man card? Yeah, it's Tomahawk. I keep hearing this is one four. Why it has no no keywords? Yeah, it has no it does... keywords, and it's. I think he was wanting to extend or make it easier for him to play all those five difficulty attacks and a long block string. But it, but it but it doesn't do anything because it, it yeah, just that's what I told it him. doesn't it doesn't not add to it doesn't it's not it doesn't add to progressive. It's it's in your card pool. It's just not there. It, it's it's weird how it works. I don't like that that card's so. Ugh. It's one of the cards actually. I really I I only like it in specifically very very certain decks. I will yeah. play that card. So he um, says the absolute musts for attacks in the deck are Nightcrusher, Flame Sword, and Hyper Bomb. Anything else such as Igiri, uh, Stinging Upper, Blizzard Sword, and Dust Crusher and Fire Slash are all negotiable, yeah. and he wants to know what he could cut down or put in. Okay. Um, let's do a. Let me get up. I'm going to kind of just do my thing here with my screens because I have a lot of screens. Joe does not. So I'm going to do this to my advantage here. Uh, looks like a standard order, and he has range and weapons, but I don't really want to look at weapons, though. Um, big things he can look at to put in this deck uh, that are efficient to the Donovan deck design. Uh, first thing that comes to mind, I would say, on this design, probably that wouldn't work. Uh crusher. Dust Crusher, yeah, Dust Crusher is an auto. It's a range, it's weapon, it, it covers everything. Um, Probably take out the Geary for the Dust Crusher. I mean, he loses a uh, low, but he yeah. gets a lot more in return. Mm. No, wait, Dust Crusher is low. It, no. No, it's a high. It's a high with a low block. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, I like Dust Crusher. Uh, I kind of think he he's playing the straight weapons. Uh, I kind of like Kianzan. Kianzan, the like the it's the three low for three plus one high block. I told uh, you. With the, yeah, that that card I I actually like that card. That's that's one of the ones that's like everybody's always like yeah, it's okay. I'm like well in certain decks that card's really good. Um, also another one I would look towards is Silver Tomahawk. It's it's it doesn't think it's. Not great, but it, it does. Ex- it's weapon. It's range. Uh, if you're under behind in foundations, which if you're playing four suspended swords, you can definitely be under in foundations, and it's stun two, which is good to have uh, after like going hyper bomb, silver tomahawk. You're like okay, stun two, and if they try to full block the full block it, they're making a five, which may not be relevant sometimes. Sometimes it might. Uh, plus, especially if you're going with a hidden from behind plan, you're like, this is a stun stun. Yeah, I know, bro. It, well, it's not a five mid for five per it's a se. It's five with an ability that makes it a five. It's Yeah, it's not like a five. They're making it a block of five. You're making their check a five, which is not bad, though. Um, uh, you know who I would love to put Tomahawk Man stuff in? Who? Order Pharaoh Man, force that stuff, and then hack the checks. That's <laughs> not bad. It's like make a check against make the check of five. Um, I would have to double check how that works. <laughs> oh no, it's it's they make the check. You respond to the ability. The ability, the, the check. They make it a check against a five, and then okay, then you're mine. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. kind of cool. It could be interesting. Uh, especially with this poke, really pokey stuff. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, the idea of this Donovan deck, I would probably cut 
it definitely sticking up for I definitely would cut. Uh, yeah, EVR, maybe EVR. I would I would I would play like two because why? Because you have reach it is the ability of like especially when you're like trying to like night crush. You just want a night crusher. You're just like stinging up or drag something in this. I when we have two want two attacks at hand, night crusher. Like that like night crusher is a three for seven throw with combo. You pitch a few cards from their hand from their card pool and you just like deal with it. So would you uh, keep the stinging upper or would you keep the gear? I would I would cut um I would probably cut the numbers down uh, across the board. Um uh, I probably cut stinging I play like one stinging upper. Uh I cut e at this point I probably cut Egeri completely. Uh would you cut Blizzard and- Sword? Because we have that's so a that's a choice. That's a personal choice. Um, I would play like it's a lot of things. Like here's your essentials to that deck. Your essential cards to this deck being aggressive and big damage are hyper bomb and flame sword. Yeah. If you're playing like the weapons plan, and- night crush you probably could play two of. So like you could probably cut it down. Like it, it, this deck has a lot of manageability. Uh, and like I, I said, Blizzard Sword is still very good, but. With the advent, I guess is the best term for it, with the newly released Battle for Power, we have really, really strong weapon attacks that could possibly be be better used over this. Still very good. Blizzard Sword is very, yeah. very good. I would yeah. say, honestly, put Blizzard Sword in the sideboard for now and test something else if yeah. you don't need to put it back in. Um. The big cards of this deck, uh, I think you should be playing for Stolen Sword. That card's amazing. Uh, if anybody has yet to play it, it is, oh my god, it's so it's godly. Sometimes you're just like, show you a fact. Like it allows you to seek build, to speed build once in a while. You're just like, show you this, show you this weapon foundation. All right, play it, bring it down, keep going. Can especially you- if you val- especially if you draw additional cards somewhere. Tangent makes a very good point. If he has the ability to and the car, uh, way to get the card, he needs to be running J-Ray's new foundation. Why? I don't... Oh, well, if he's playing... If he's playing... Yeah, if he's playing Dust Crushers, uh, it's not a bad idea. That also... Because the problem is his commit... What else does he have for, like, random commit costs? Uh... Um, oh, you could put in uh, Shyness. Uh, what's that one? Uh, shyness and Strike. It's a stun two, uh, plus two damage. You have Hyper Bomb. You're right. Hyper Bomb's in there as well, guys. Um, this is one of those things where I, like, I think off the top of my head and I'm trying the best I can off the top of my head. But yeah, that's true. You could put Hyper, yes, hyper Bomb. Um, you don't have to play a set of them, but you could play a few. Like yeah. It's just because it helps free up your, your cost out for the turn. I mean, plus you're playing Artemis Avarice, which is amazing. You're playing for speed bonus, and you might just randomly draw cards here and there. Right. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, it's a good deck. All right, it's we strong. gotta move on because we're already we're eating it. Yeah, we may be able to go a little bit longer for the show. It's not a big deal. Yeah. All right, next up we got Brobirds. Ah. So you're this explaining is a... this one entirely because I don't know a single okay. thing of what's going on. All right, so here's what this here, here's the idea of this deck. You are Basilio San Juan. Now, Basilio San Juan does some really crazy stuff. Um, your ideas of this deck, you are a life and water hybrid deck. Um, now, your plan is using your ability to draw two, discard two, and play. You're trying to play a range attack from your discard pile every turn and while digging for Tengu dives. That is your plan of this deck. Uh, it has just a bunch of ways uh, to do some dirty things. Uh, Aether Influence, you have Transform, uh, which helps you get Tengu dives, helps you just play Tengu dives. Uh, Bounce and roll is really good because it can help you add play more stuff into your into your area. You're playing the mysterious Mr. X, 
because you're pitching a card to put glacial for glacial assault into play. Glacial assault then destroys itself, and you get a replacement foundation. Uh, you get petro powered. You get hunt for spires and dragons. It's this deck is all value. This is, it's it's all value. Your objective here. Your objective is just to add as many cards to your card pool, and then you just play Scorch Wheel and you Scorch Wheel and draw. I'm ton of this is a Scorch Wheel deck. This is a I am the Silvia San Juan. I am a male character, and I have a way to and I have a way to somehow put together a, an insane draw a million cards deck. All right, so I'm gonna ask this, and I want your honest yeah. opinion. Is okay. this a more refined and better version than the Turbo Man Scorch Wheel deck? This is complete. Like the thing is, the difference between this deck and traditional Turbo Man is you're playing Life Water Hybrid, um, which is a big thing. Uh, you get to play Agile. Um, okay. Agile is like Agile is just like all right. So if I'm playing Scorch Wheels I'll, off sim, let's just say like I'm, I'm I draw my let's go like three turns in. I've got a bunch of foundations. I'm Vasilio, and I'm like, I do my first staff. I play my water. I play my one. Uh, I'll play. I'll lead with Tengu Dive. I'm like, okay, Tengu Dive hits, adds some momentum. No, no combo enhance or nothing else. Or, or I play Kamatachi, and I'm like, okay, I have all these Agiles in hand. So you're like, you're using Mysterious Mister X to loop Glacial Assaults. So you just gain free free foundations, and then you just go and like play three agiles, commit a foundation every time I play one. Uh, so now I've played like four foundations for free into my into my stage and area. Play my scorch wheel, draw four cards, and now I'm off to the races. <laughs> this is this deck looks like a ton of fun. Um, also, it might just be an it, it could it, it digs so hard. You're playing a fairly tight deck you're playing 60 cards exactly and you're only playing 12 attacks like you just have all these ways to to net value for your scorch wheels and that's the important part all righty um <laughs> some of the other cool things this deck can do um uh, obviously you're just looking at every looking at everything as a whole here um i mean the big one is the mysterious mr x i'm um, looking for a fight it's another card that's just like Glacial Assault, except it's not as – it has some whatever abilities. Hunt for Spires and Dragons is great because you can off-symbol it. Um, like Especially you can go like play Kamadachi out of your yard every turn, play Hunt for Spires and Dragons, play the Tengu Dive, bring the hunt down, then draw your card – then do your combo for Tengu Dive. Oh. This deck is really cute. Um, you can it's it's openly accessible on Kevin Broberg's uh, UFS Ultra page, and it will mess people up. Yep. So if you want to play Basilio San Juan, try it out. All right. Uh, next up, we got uh, the first of two decks from Nathan Worthy, who's been quite vocal on our YouTube page. We really thank him for that. Uh, this is his Shinsuke Nakamura Crash Man deck. Creative naming. I, 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 once I looked at the deck for a minute, I'm like, oh, strong style. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I saw, at least. Resize a little bit. That way we can get the numbers. All right. So this is a very straightforward build. Lots of four of. Actually, it's, everything's a four of. So yeah. we got... Uh, Fire Palm, Crash Bomber, Crash Slam, Spine Sweep, Blast Through, and most of Crash Man stuff, and uh, just some good general fire stuff. I'm kind of wondering uh, if he didn't put any uh, Rulers of Time or uh, Neomax simply because he didn't have it, or if he just thought this would be better. I think it, maybe this is how he wanted to build the deck. I mean, sometimes you're, I mean, there's play, he's playing vengeful intentions. I mean, that's a little, I think the idea of this deck is one, he's playing a direct hit plan, which is if your stuff's completely blocked, you're still getting it in there for full damage. And you're, you have a lot of attacks that are going to get in there for one to three damage. Plus you have vengeful intentions, which is these are non-throw attacks. So you're like going direct hit, 
vengeful intentions. They're like, okay, take four, then take two, take two from the vengeful intentions. Like it's it's a cute thing. Um, this deck is very aggressive. That's all I can really say about it. You're going first F. Uh, you look at your hand, you choose a block zone, and you just name it. Uh, and then you try to play the game of can I guess that my opponent's going to partial block more or not. Uh, he's playing some cards that I have been wanting to play, and he's playing some cards that he, he has to put some cards in that he needs to play. Um, yeah. The late Dead Nation, uh, really good card in this deck because you're just trying to push damage. Uh, that's what I like about it. Um, Demolition Expert, you're on the same idea. You're trying to just be get every zone coverage so you're partial blocking as much as possible. Uh, you're playing elemental techniques for the same idea. You're just trying to you're just trying to you're trying to do this. Play an attack, tap their stun their board out, and then just activate every effect you can. Um he is kind of playing some stuff off symbol. Like he's predominantly Earth, but he is playing Crook's Bud Line and he's playing uh seeking allies and vengeful intentions off symbol but he's writing so much dual symbol it's not really a big issue yep. i think he should be playing improved design that card's really good mm -hmm. you have no other value way to value cards uh i mean it's crash van crash vans uh, i kind of like the a uh, different idea with him like i personally have a different idea on how to play Car crash van if i was going to play him he, the biggest thing you need to do is play his. You need to play Danger Zone, but I understand it's an ultra rare, so not always can you get access to Danger Zones. Like you just play Danger Zone and you play all high attacks. You just like you, deal with this. Do you think he needs four blasting throughs? No, <laughs> he does not need four blasting throughs. I think you can cut those down to two. Um, I think he could play uh there's a couple of attack like the one proto uh proto buster little mini proto buster attack the three low for three uh he could definitely be playing that uh, uh that be playing saw blades if he has access to them definitely like it just you all you're going to do is make gigantic attacks with this deck yeah and if they are able to even partial block you're just like oh well you partial blocked Plus four damage, so now you're taking an extra two damage on the block. Um, I mean, it, this is just, it's a deck. It, it's, if I was going to take a bunch of cards and that I don't play with often and put this together, this is kind of what it would look like. Uh, I mean, Crash Man's Crash Man. I wish he was better. Uh, he just doesn't fit the meta where I would feel comfortable playing him, even uh, even just in casual. Because he just doesn't do it. It's kind of like he doesn't want to do anything. You want him to do something, but he just doesn't. Right. But with this situation, uh, you just put everything for You put all your damage into one attack. The second they no block, you just like, all right, blasting through and pick it up, launch it at him again. And just eventually you just go, all of my speed bonuses, all of my damage bonuses kill you. Yeah. Sometimes that works. Alright, uh, this final one tonight before we switch up topics. This is Nathan's second deck. Uh, Blank Man. Looks like it's a Caden 2 dot deck. Now this deck I actually kind of have some, I have some praise for, because this is pretty cool. Uh, obviously Caden 2 dot. Nobody really knows what he does, but guess what? He does things, especially relevant right now. Uh, react 5 plus after your opponent increases the speed or damage of an attack, turn one foundation in their staging area face down. Not they choose, you choose. And then after your attack deals damage, destroy one face down foundation. Uh, Kaden, he might have a spot right now where you could play him and you might be able to like roll some people but i i really think you could do it right now um he has some great cards on top of his own effects uh he's playing a heavy all lows deck uh so he gets to play crawling strike which is 
if your opponent tries to fully block uh, or block with a low block this turn, the rest of the turn, they have to flip a foundation and cost. So if they can't completely block anything, it gets kind of crazy. Uh, he's playing somersault kicks, which are ways to just drag things out of the pool. Spine suits are just a giant low attack. And then leg ram, which is I win. <laughs> your objective is to leg ram. I think your objective with this deck is to build to a leg ram on like turn three and just be like, all right, leg ram you and hope it's good. Uh, you're playing bell tolls, killing dinosaurs. The same idea. It's kind of like the same idea as the uh, the Crash Man deck he submitted with us. It's get an attack, put a bunch of damage on it, and if they don't do anything, you just smash them in the face. Uh, I particularly like Somersault Kick. Somersault Kick very, very much takes a lot of advantage in this deck. Oh, yeah, because you, you know there's going to be a face down for it. Now, like... Go ahead. No, I, I, that's all. I, I think it's it's one of those cards you can take advantage of. Uh, I you also have the best part of like going like going deep into like play three attacks and then like all right the best wine plus five damage. It's and pretty good. I'm fairly certain Spine Sweep is going to be one of those like go to cards very shortly. Yeah. I really think Spine Sweep should have been written differently. I don't like that it says up to two foundations. I think it should say destroy two foundations, which means if there if you have a foundation in play and your opponent has one, you have to destroy yours. Like that's how I wish it were. It was worded. Yeah. Um, that's the big thing about Spine Sweep. As I play with it more, I just think it gives it two. It may if once again. Going to quote Sean on this one. I think Spine Sweep and just our curve of asset destruction is, once again, is making assets just like, eh, don't really want to play them unless they're like completely and utterly re relevant for you winning your games. Well, I mean, a lot of the champ cards are often uh, very asset based as opposed to foundation based. So uh, having something like that, uh, I can kind of see why it's needed. I said assets. I didn't. I, I swear I said assets when we were talking about you, Spine Sweep. You did. I was just saying is that hmm. champ cards are more asset based ah. as opposed to foundation. So the really, really good one are usually champ cards. And those ones are just absurdly strong. So having something that can just outright kill them, I kind yeah. of, it's needed. Mm -hmm. Oh. But yeah, uh, these are the decks we decided to go through this time. Uh, we plan to do these a little bit more often. We're probably going to do one coming up before Worlds. Uh, we're going like, to let the decks... We have a couple of PTCs coming up that are going to kind of branch out a little bit. We'll see what people play at those PTCs, talk about the decks. Um, we definitely want to always look at more decks people are submitting. We'll definitely make an announcement when we're going to do more. So now we're shifting right. topics, and we're going to be doing a little bit of magic, so people will be amazed as we shift over to Final Fantasy. Bam. Um, so, Final Fantasy trading card game. Uh, Jesse and I are really looking forward to this. I've just been digging all around into it um, so far that we may actually be making Mana Points second show. Um, now, uh, I have been doing a lot of research. Um, and Jesse, I think you've read some of the core mechanics along with me, right? Um, I've read a few little things. I have, I was supposed to, it was on my list of things to do today. It didn't happen today. So we're not going to go through cards itself, just the core mechanics of the game, but we'll give our overall thoughts. So, so far right now, the game is a 50 card deck. Uh, each card gets a max, uh, Maximum of three copies in the card. It looks like I need to shrink that down a little bit. Uh, cop three copies of each individual card. You can have multiple versions of a card. So if there's one Tifa, you have another Tifa. Um, and there are some... Uh, this game looks to be very hand-focused. Uh, what I mean by that is you can have only five sources of crystal points, which is what they're calling mana in this game. 
uh, mm -hmm. out on the field at any given time. So you can only have five backups, which is your effect lands, essentially. They're like lesser characters or uh, more passive main character abilities. You can only have five of those out on the field at any given time. Uh, tapping, or I think they're calling it dulling in this game, uh, only generates one point of uh, crystal points. And discarding a card uh, generates two. So you're going to have a lot of discard. Is this game basically this, my number is bigger than yours? Uh, yes, this is a single number offense defense card game. Looks like I still need to shrink it. Mm. There we go. Now I'm only in a little bit of it. So I'll just go here. And Jesse will go here. <laughs> Alright. So, um, here it's a six element uh, system with air, earth, fire, water, ice, thunder. Uh, they all play very much like you would expect a mana, color mana system to play as. Uh, overall, uh, certain characters, certain colors. Tiff is red. Uh, Barrett's yellow, which is like the big buff sim uh, symbol. Um, Cloud's red. Squall is ice. Uh, Sephiroth is ice. Uh, monkey guy from Final Fantasy IX, whose name escapes me, is air. Stuff like that. So, you know. Overall, this looks to be very good. I've read the demo pamphlet. I've seen uh, a video of it being like demoed slightly. I look, it looks like something I'm going to enjoy. Jesse, any? Uh, I put in a request with uh, with for demo decks. Uh, like I said, I'm supposed to message back at the end of the month. As soon as I get confirmation, I will be uh, that I have demo decks. I definitely want to at least test it locally. See, I want to play with some people. Probably see if I can get Matt to, you know, step away from his job for a moment. Maybe even learn it because, you know, it might help his job when they start if they start carrying it. Uh, but right now, I kind of I'm waiting until I get it in hand. That's what's important to me. I need this. I need it. I can't judge a game. I could read mechanics. I can watch videos until I play a game with cards, physical cards. I can't give you a judgment on a game. Which That's always how fair. I am. Very what? Fair. Which is very fair. Yeah. So like I'm I'm just gonna, I I'm leaving my judgment like right now from my visual side of it and seeing everything. It's okay. It doesn't it doesn't excite me. But maybe I'll play the game and be like, oh, this game has some interesting mechanics that I didn't expect to see and how the things play out and how turns progress. Maybe I would be more interested in it. Yeah, other than that, I'm really looking forward to it because I'm a huge Final Fantasy nut. I'm very slowly making my way through six for the first time. However, I'm easily distracted right now. I just got uh, Legends of Hero Trials of Cold Steel 2. Uh, still working on Monster Hunter Generations. I don't know why everybody told me Rathalos was going to be a problem. That thing is like the easiest dragon I've ever had to deal with. <laughs> Um, then I got other games coming out in September, so it, it's going to be a slow trek through seven for me, but I'm really looking forward to this. I got a lot of friends that are looking forward to this, so, I mean, I'm fully on board. I just really want to try something new, and I've done Bushi, I've done Jasco, I've done UDE, I've done just about... A little yep. bit of everything under the sun. So this definitely piques my interest, especially because this is being published by Square Enix and Hobby Japan. Yep. I want to see what I want to look at car quality. I want to look at the overall game. I just got to, like I said, we'll see what happens when we get to it. And I'll give an opinion then. That's what I'll do. So. So, uh, I, what are we doing next week? Do we have any definitive plans next week? <sighs> Next week, we are definitely going to be going over the results of the Colchester UK PTC uh, that's going on this weekend. Uh, I am hoping uh, Rio Gopal will get his will make make good things happen and get some and get and earn some extra points towards their uh, their their finals going that's leading into for the PTC where you get some extra points. Uh, 
match points towards the end. They have some crazy thing they're doing over there. But the end is you get to go to you get to travel to the United States for Worlds, which I would love to go. I, if Rio wins and has the ability, it gets the ability to travel to the, the United States for Worlds next year or like in January or no, or whatever event he decides to travel to, I will be there. And I will team with that man. Just like you know. We are truly Rio's the one that's really hyped on hand five handers, right? He is, but you know, he plays other things. He's he's he played Mega Man. He won with Mega Man. He won a PTC with Mega Man at some point, you know. Right. That's what Alright, so we got saying. UK PTC, uh Michigan PTC, I think later this month. Yep. Uh I am trying to figure out how I can go to it. Uh, it may have to include me calling into work, thinking so, about it. Oh, I got a question. If that's the 23rd, uh, how's that going to work for them? Because that's Kaladesh's sneak peek day. Uh, they've already made it. They, they commonly, the <laughs> that happens. And they, I bet the store is aware of this already, and they have that, they'll figure it out from there. Probably just but, gonna, like, yeah. tape off a piece of the room just for them, and then... Yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, many hopes that Whirly Ball will return from Michigan. <laughs> yeah, I probably won't be able to make it Friday. I probably won't be able to get it. I leave until after I get out of work on Friday. Um, I'm pretty much trying to figure out if... I have a place to stay, or if I have to play for a room. Like, there's a lot of variables that come into me going to Michigan. Yeah. More or less, it's like I don't want to buy get a hotel room for myself for two nights. That's the one thing, and I'd rather not to drive myself because <laughs> that's yeah, kind of stupid. Well, I don't think anybody wants that. No. Uh, so next week we'll be going over UK PTC decks because the UK has such a unique menu oh, yeah. of the US. I want to see. I want to see if that uh, that C deck shows up again. The what? If anybody remembers. Okay, so at one of the last events in the UK, there was this C deck, and it was a gigantic pile of character cards and gigantic attacks and six check foundations. All right. I want to see if maybe that deck will make a run back because it was so surprising. You're just like, what's going on? And then you're like, you read the report and like, oh, this deck's amazing. And I even built it, and it was really hard to build because you need a lot of ultra rares. But it was fun. All right. So other than that, we are done for the night. Thank you for watching. Yep. This will be up on the uh, YouTube page uh, either sometime later tonight or sometime tomorrow. Uh, yep. As always, guys, like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, hit that little follow button because we're going to be on Twitch for a good while. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so that'll be something there. I, though I think we're getting much more used to Twitch after only two shows. So that's good. Yep. Definitely. Uh, also, I will let everybody know in two weeks what it was like as Joe Tanello takes the giant leap into magic for the first time. Ooh. I already have an RDW deck, but I still don't play the game. I know how to play the game. I don't know how to play the game at this current point, but Kaladesh looks like a great jumping point for a new player in Standard. Uh, it looks like RDW is going to get a really big push, and I am very interested in what I'm calling the Red Racer deck, where it's the two cars uh, that are like aced and trampled and ridiculously huge. Yep. Uh, and a whole bunch of red effects to make them just go faster. True. So, uh, until next time, guys, uh, we will see you next time, and thank you for watching. Night, everybody.